Hello, and welcome to Internet Roundup. Uh, that's Josh Clark. I'm Chuck Bryant, and we, during the day, are the host of Stuff You Should Know, the podcast. But after dark... Yeah, things start happening. Remember Cinemax after dark? <laughs> yeah. That's like this. Or Playboy after dark <laughs> was that... I think they had a TV show. Oh, you think? Like a <laughs> No, like a primetime special in the 70s. Oh, really? They were trying to make a series out of it. Interesting. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to watch that <laughs> stuff. Oh, you think? I wasn't either. Uh, but we all snuck it in somehow, didn't we? I just read about it after <laughs> the fact. Um, all right, what are we doing this week? We round up the internet two things at a time, mm-hmm. and we're we're making a dent. So far, we've rounded up, I think, point <laughs> zero zero one percent of the internet. They keep adding stuff. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so what should we do? Let's do cigarette labels, which should come with a warning. Yes, beware, because you're about to see some gnarly stuff right up on this wall. We uh, just gave a warning about warnings. Yeah. So what happens if you don't live, uh, if you live in the United States, you may not know this, but many, many, many countries around the world uh, don't stop at just a text warning on the cigarette pack like this is bad for you. Mm-hmm. They go full tilt and have some countries up to 85% of the package covered in graphic graphics. Another way to put it is that tobacco companies don't have quite as much of a stranglehold yeah. <laughs> as they do in the U.S. Yeah, it seems like it. Uh, Article 2 of the D- uh, World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control mm-hmm. requires parties within three years to require tobacco product warnings to cover at least 30 to 50% the visible area on a pack. Right. And uh, 77 countries and territories are down with this. United States is not. Big shock. Yeah. George Washington Hill's <laughs> ghost is at work here. Yeah, the tobacco lobby has fought this at every turn, uh, even suing uh, the U.S. FDA, um, saying that it violates <laughs> our free speech First Amendment rights. Yeah. What are you going to do, FDA, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we just figure we show you some of these. They're pretty hardcore. They really are. Some of them are like... There, there's some that are thinky, like where there's smoke, there's hydrogen cyanide. Right. You have to be familiar with hydrogen cyanide or at least susceptible to the idea that those words sound dangerous. Sure. You know? But then uh, others yeah. are like gross. Yeah, really gross. And I, I can't imagine, man, buying a pack of cigarettes, looking down and seeing this guy with the throat tumor. It's like a a glistening neck beard, a red, bloody, glistening neck beard. It says smoking can cause a slow and painful death, and it has that photo. Like, how do you buy the cigarettes? <laughs> and just be like, yeah, man, let's do this. <laughs> I suspect that that's why the tobacco companies are dragging their feet on this. Why? Because it makes no difference? <laughs> no, because it, ch- it chases off customers. I don't know. Does it? I wonder if it's uh, uh, are there studies that this is effective? I would guess after a certain age. Surely there are studies as, as, as to whether it's effective or not, but... I would think after you get to that age where you don't think you're going to live forever, yeah, I don't know, late mid twenties, sure, um, it could start to to have an effect. Well, my favorite one out of all these is the one from New Zealand. Uh, if we put that up there, smoking can make you impotent, and it has a, uh, a cigarette that's just like <laughs> bent and down. All right, all right, get it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How about Hong Kong? Which one is that? Right there. Ooh! Yeah! Wow! That's a good one. That is a good one. There, for some reason, this this dead skeleton in Hong Kong is wearing a Canadian tuxedo, which I don't understand. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. It's amazing. So if you want to see uh, huge lumpy tumors and uh, that kind of stuff on your cigarette packs, just get yourself a passport and travel the world. Yeah, or you can uh, get them in the United States, and it just has a tiny warning that says cigarettes may be dangerous. Maybe, but they make you look cool. Maybe. <laughs> We don't want to cause anybody to not smoke, but maybe they could be harmful. All right, what are we else? Uh, what are we else doing? Said Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> let's do. Um, oh, uh, let's talk about that gorilla in 1996, shall we? Oh, was that when that was? Yeah, back in 96. That explains the Ross Perot joke in the article. Oh, uh, <laughs> I wonder what that was all about. So if you go onto Philly.com, which is the Philadelphia Inquirer's website, you can find. One of the clumsiest titled articles of all time, may I? I think it's great. Mother of the Year, a gorilla named Binti Jua gently scoops up an injured child and snatches hearts around the world in the process, period. Predictable animal behavior, comma, says one expert, period. Genuine compassion, comma, says another, period. That's, <laughs> That's the headline. <laughs> well, it was 1996. They were 
Yeah, it's not 1896. That was the birth of newspapers. This is crazy stuff. <laughs> so what happened was Binta Jua, Jua, uh, eight-year-old Western Lowland gorilla at Brookfield Zoo, which uh, was that Chicago? No, it was Philly. Oh, it was. Yeah. Uh, basically saved a three-year-old boy, fell into the enclosure, was knocked unconscious, mm -hmm. and with her own baby clinging to her back, like gently scooped this kid up and took him out. To, yeah. Or not out, but t took him to the people there yeah. to help. And the kid, I mean, the little three-year-old kid, um, he fell hard. He hit his head. I think he fell head first, like uh, 10, 10 feet maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, there were several other gorillas, including males in this enclosure. Mm -hmm. And um, like Binti Jua went up and, and from what everybody could tell, kept the other ones at bay while she protected this kid and then took him over to the door so that the zookeepers could come get him. If you read this article though, and America went nuts for this. Oh yeah. Like like Binti Jua was named mother of the year. Yeah. Um, there were people who were saying Binti Jua for president. Yeah. Uh, they were sending her fruit baskets. Yeah. People were trying to adopt her. Mm -hmm. um, and so everybody was just loving this gorilla. Um, this article just shoots holes in a lot of that stuff. Well, basically what it says is put away your uh, your emotions for a moment and let's look at this through the lens of science. Right. And when you do that, they're saying she's basically just being a gorilla and gorillas aren't known for taking a, a small unconscious uh, life and pounding it to death. <laughs> with a hammer. So they're usually very gentle with things right. and they approach things with caution. It's Espe still a great story. Especially because the boy was motionless. Right. They were saying that if he'd been running around screaming, there's no telling what would have happened. The to hammer him, right? would have come out. Yeah. <laughs> but even more than that, don't be astounded with Binti Jua because she was actually raised by people. Sure. And became so accustomed to humans and dealing with humans that when she became pregnant herself, they had to outfit her with a baby gorilla doll so she could get used to gorillas and interacting with gorillas. Yeah. So they were saying that she was almost in a way raised to deal with this situation, yeah. to go over and, and show compassion and kindness towards this little kid. That in and of itself is kind of astounding that of all the gorillas in the world for this boy uh, to yeah. fall into their enclosure, it just so happened to be Binti Jewas who was basically primed for this kind of situation. Pretty great. Um, it is pretty great. No matter how you cut it, you can't really detract from this this wonderful story from almost 20 years ago. Yeah, so this kid is in his early 20s now. He, yeah, he if survived. he's still alive. He did. I looked him up. He Has spent he fallen? four days in the hospital. Oh, okay. And he's totally recovered. I didn't know if he had fallen into any more enclosure since then, though. No, he didn't, but um, it has happened in other cases, and oh, yeah. other gorillas have displayed similar behavior. Yeah. Like there was a boy in, I think, London in 1988 who fell into a gorilla enclosure. I guess that's the thing among dumb kids. Well, I think uh, the parents need to stop holding them over the fence so sure. they can see, get a better look. Or just holding them by their hand <laughs> right. to really for a dramatic effect. Uh -huh. but, but the boy fell in, and I guess he was unconscious, and a gorilla came over and pulled his shirt up and was like gently stroking his back. Ugh. How sweet is that? Amazing. But what's funny is this, this article is from 1996, and they're like, do not anthropomorphize. Animals don't have emotions. It's never been proven. And it's kind of funny 20 years on to read this because yes. if you look at primatology, uh, and biology at large, the idea of animals having emotions is becoming much more accepted. Yeah. The, the fact that it's still not accepted is hilarious to me. It is. Uh, animals don't have emotions. Come on. Come on. All right. That's it. Consider the internet rounded up for the week. And uh, we've put one more little tiny dent in it. Yep. Although they're probably going to add more stuff in between probably this so. time and next. Uh, but we will see you next week on Internet Roundup. <laughs>